Morning church. I hope everybody's excited as I am to be here. Yep. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just want to start by just opening a prayer. If we just close our hearts and our minds just for a moment, we'll open our hearts and close our minds and our eyes for a bit. Sorry. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. We just thank you that we can come together just to worship you this morning. Father, it's all about you. This meeting today and just what we're going to speak about today is all about you, Jesus. It's not about us. It's not about what we can do or what we can say, Lord. But we, we've come this morning with hearts that are surrendered to you, Father, because we want to know your heart. Father, we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for each and every one of us. Father, we think of the community that you have placed us in, that we would have a heart for people. Father, I pray that out of this meeting today as we share about what your heart is and what you've laid on our hearts, Father, that all of us would catch fire and in a passion for your name will burn in our hearts, Father. For the lost in our community, Father. There are people dying that are going to hell. And it is up to us as the people of God who are called by your name, Father, to submit ourselves to you today. And we say that we want to leave this place changed and transformed by your word. Father, you empower us by your spirit, Lord. We are not alone in this. Father, you have made a way for us to walk in that goes far beyond this life and this existence that we have on this planet, Father. You have greater things in store for us, Father. For each and every human being that is born into this world, you have a plan and a purpose for them, Father, each and every one of us. And we thank you, Lord, that you have called us for such a time as this. Lord, that we're going to leave this place, we're going to be changed, transformed by the power of the Spirit and a renewed mind, Father. And I pray for a, a desire in our hearts to read your word more, to spend time in prayer, Lord, seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, Lord. We pray that we fix our eyes on your righteousness, Lord, because our righteousness is but, but, but filthy rage before you. And we thank you, Lord, for this time. We just pray that you speak to us this morning, Father. And uh, may we leave this place just renewed, refreshed, and ready to ch take on this year ahead. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Mark. Good morning, church. Uh, we're quite excited as a leadership team. We're all of one accord, and we're really excited about just sharing with you the, this morning some of our thoughts. But the, before we uh, do so, I just want to carry on Mark, with Mark. Uh, spoke last week about um, the, the first of two in, in a series of two of foundations. So quite a good idea at the start of the year to to look at foundations and what, what are the foundations of your faith, for instance. And um, I'm going to just mention two today. One which is very close to my heart and I'm like a stuck record with it, with the ladies group, and that is to develop a deep hunger and desire to know God. Uh, not to know about Him, but to know Him. Um, and it's, it's likened to knowing like this lovely young couple in the front here, they know about marriage, but they have no idea what marriage is. It's so until you marry somebody and you live out your life with them, the ups and downs of life, that you really truly know what marriage is. Amen. And so it is with the Lord. Amen. <laughs> so I always think about how in, in the beginning, um, Adam and Eve worked with, walked with God in the Garden of Eden. And so there's this, this call from God throughout all of time for us to come and walk in the Garden with Him again. And He's calling to you every day to come and walk with Him and commune with Him and walk out your day with Him. And so can I just urge you, church, to do that? In the, in, the, in the early morning and in the late in the evening and throughout your day, that your position would, would be one of walking with the Lord. It requires discipline and it requires intentionality. You need to be intentional about it. It's not something that just happens. 
when you when you say to the Lord, I believe in you. It's something that you have to decide to do and then do. In Mark 1, verse 35, this is about Jesus. Before daybreak, the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Later, Simon and the others went out to find him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. And so there's a lovely example from Jesus himself about him thinking good time to get away would be first thing in the morning. And he was intentional, he had a plan, and he did it, regardless of the fact that they were all looking for him. And so for us too, I'm sure when you wake up, you think of 101 things that you have to do, but you have to be intentional about putting God first. So the second uh, foundational thing that I want to talk about is that of belonging to a body, a body, to Christ's body, the church. And um, Hebrews 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 24 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Couldn't be more true, that scripture. So what we do in church shapes us. It's not just an add-on to, to our lives. According to Jesus, it's the most fundamental thing that we, we get together. And um, when, you, when you read the Bible, it always talks about transformation in a plural, in, in the plural. And so it's all about us as believers together, what the Holy Spirit is doing. So let's be found together. Church is important. Yes, I think um, just to add on to what Jenny's saying about church, is the church is you and me together. And the body of Christ is missing something if people are not attending church. And so I think it's a, a discipline that, you know, it, it, it's almost, for me, sad if people don't come to church. It's almost like a selfish thing. Because we miss you if you're not at church. Because you bring something that is unique, be you, to the body. And if you think of the, of the church being a body, when somebody is not at church, it's part of the body's missing. A finger, a toe, a foot. So we really want to encourage people to intimately know God this year and to belong to the body and to push in. Because if you feel that you're not part of the church, you know, nobody on this team is full-time. Everybody's working. And same with you guys, most people are working. Um, so we need you to push in and belong and take on something. And I must say that this church, generally speaking, is, is, is very fortunate because people put their hands up and we have an incredible body. But for those that are on the outskirts, push in, come and speak to us, see where you can serve. Because that's what we do, we just serve serving one another, serving the glory of the king. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about, uh, just to let you know what we're going to do this morning, is Jen's just spoken about foundations. I'm going to just talk very quickly about um, how we're going to run church this year uh, and what our main focus is going to be for the year. And we, we're really going to be talking about shared leadership this morning. And uh, each couple are going to speak about something that they are going to be sort of uh, something close to their heart that they'll be leading as part of the shared leadership. And it's going to be almost a, a, a chat. So we're just going to chat between us and add into what, we, what, what, what each of us are going to be saying. So just in a nutshell, um, Charlene and Brett are going to be talking a little bit about um, the Zulu Church and where that's going to be going, and the, the upliftment program that Charlene has in her mind. Greg and Kath are going to talk about the uh, children's church and um, 
the new church building, which Greg is um, he's, he's sort of overseeing that. And then Mark and Caroline are going to be talking about One Life and our connection through the, the One Life uh, uh, opportunities that we have, adding on to, to where we are. But the first thing I want to talk about is shared leadership. Now, in that Jen and I um, and the rest of the team all, all work, we have to share the responsibility to serve you better. Otherwise, we're going to drop the ball. So, fortunately for Jen and I, we've got an incredible team uh, of, of couples here. And every one of them have put up their hands to say, where can we serve and help you to take the load off? And I just want to read, um, if you remember Exodus 18, uh, verse 17, you've got Jethro talking to Moses. And in those days, Moses was taking more and more on his shoulders. And his father-in-law came to him and said, you need to share your leadership. And I'll just read it. It says, this is not good, Moses. This is Jethro speaking. Um, okay. This is not good, Moses. His father-in-law father -in exclaimed, you're going to wear yourself out. And the people too. The job is too heavy a burden to you to handle all by yourself. So with that in mind, we spoke about shared leadership to take the responsibility of leadership. And you will notice over the last period of time that whoever's on duty as leaders sit at the front. So we, whoever's on duty, those are the people who are on duty for that Sunday and they're leading the church for that week. So they would be the person that you would come to speak to if you're wanting something to, to share or something to, to, to be prayed about or whatever. And also, just to let you know that the, the leaders can, you can ask any couple to do a marriage, a baptism, a baby dedication, or even a, a, a memorial service. Um, I just want to say thank you to Gus and Mary for taking so much of that off our shoulders, and they will continue to support us as leaders. And we see Gus and Mary almost as elders that we can go to to, to bounce things off. So they have their role. Okay, so, and we're very grateful for that, and they will continue to do what they do. But I'm very excited about the future. And um, so that's really, in a, in, a, in a nutshell, what we're going to be doing this year. Um, the other thing that we want to do this year is we want to be right with how church is meant to be structured. So the only people who have, who have been ordained as elders on this team or in this church is Jenny and I, and we were ordained by Peter Ras Newsom uh, back in 2015. Um, and it's not really the right structure because all the elders need to be ordained. So this year, um, we have spoken to Grant Crawford um, from One Life, and he is very happy because he's got to know us now um, with our connecting in with, their, with, with, with One Life. And either he or uh, Ray Oliver, who started basically One Life Church, will ordain all the couples this year. So I'm very excited about that, and I think that that's a good thing. Um, and with the building of the church and the body growing, that's what we see going to be happening over the few years coming along. Um, obviously, we're going to be looking for more people to come onto leadership and to connect. Um, and we will also be doing a lot more um, sort of training, equipping of, of the people that would possibly be just not really the elders, but the deacons, which is part of the, the functioning and the leading of the church. So we're very excited about that. Um, yeah, so that's really what uh, I wanted to say. And anybody um, is invited to push in because we are looking for people that put their hand up, push in, and of potential leaders. I think that's really a good thing as a growing church. This year, um, as a focus, we have been given the scripture, which is a very well-known one. It's been on the wall for years. The very poster there, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, we've had on our hearts over the last 
four or five years, they go. And it was the most amazing word that God gave us. Because before COVID and all that, we were going out there and we were serving the community. When the fires happened, when people um, needed help with, with meals, or anything like that, we had this team going out, going. But we want to take that one step further this, uh, over the next uh, year, and that is to go and make disciples. So in order to do that, you've got to, you've got to have an intimate and close relationship with God so that you're going equipped and you go out there positively with hope because you know that God is victorious. And irrespective of the circumstances, you should be positive and have hope for the Lord God and for the glory of Him. So that is what we want to do, is push it one step further, and it's simple things. Just little things like, do you want to go for a cycle on Sunday morning? Sure. But I've got church first, I'll come after it. Wednesday, do you want to have a game of squash? Oh, sorry chaps, we've got a prayer meeting at 5 o'clock, can we make it a little late? That speaks volumes. That you're putting Christ and the church above your personal activities. And that we are encouraging people to take those little stands because that speaks volumes. Do you think we can do that? Let's really put Christ first this year. Know Him and be the light. Simple. Let's go out there and really be good Christians. Followers of Christ. Um, I'm now going to ask uh, Charlene and Brett to talk about the Zulu Church, but before that, I just want to know if any of you guys want to talk about the shared leadership or disciples. Well, David, um, if I can just hold on that, um, you know, God has called us to community. Um, none of us are alone in this. God has actually designed humanity in such a way that we need each other. You know, none of us can walk this road alone. And there's, I'll be honest with you, that some days I find life quite challenging and difficult. And it's so nice to know that if there's someone in this body that I can go to and talk and just let my burdens out. You know, God calls us to bear one another's burdens, you know. And, uh, and then when, when we do that, we shouldn't go out and start talking about it to somebody else, if you know what I mean. We've got to keep it to ourselves and we've got to walk the road with that person. We're just going through a tough time and they open up to you. Let us be a people that are, are willing to just walk with that person because it is so rewarding. And, um, you know, I just uh, think of our, our niece who recently got saved at the one conference. I mean, it's just, for me, that has just spoken volumes of what God wants to do in, in the life of every person. You know, and it's up to you and I who know the truth. Let us go out there. Let us go and make disciples. Let us be the light, like David just said. Let us be the light so people can see something different in us. And they're going to want that. They're going to desire that. You know, we want to fill this place with people. You know, we can have a church building. We can sing worship songs and do what we've been doing for the last how many years. But if we are not advancing the kingdom of God, we're missing the purpose and the plan that God has for each and every one of us. You know, this is not a heavy because what is... What is so awesome is that God empowers us to do the work of ministry. Amen. I wasn't going to say anything, but as Mark was speaking, I could just feel when my heart pumps in, I know God's telling me to speak. Um, but I just wanted to say, based on that, that you know, there's somebody that might be like me that can be here that you oh my goodness, I can't do that. Um, but I just want to say how important prayer is because even if you don't have the confidence and the courage to step out, you can pray. So just pray. Pray for the person. Pray for people around you because that's what builds the body and that's what we build the church and that's behind everything we do. Okay, let me just go to um, Morning, everyone. I just want to say that Jane has spoken about intent, being intentional and Dave has spoken about serving. For me, I'm very passionate and I'm going to be, leadership knows I'm very blunt, okay, so I'm going to be very blunt. Please, and I'm not being nasty. Don't put your hand up if you don't intend to serve. 
Serving is not about ticking the box. Serving is about actually giving to Christ because you're actually serving for Him. You, you're not serving to fulfill yourself. You're serving to fulfill the people that you are fellowshipping with. So by putting your hand up to serve, to come alongside us and build this church, you're not building it for yourself. You're not building it for us either. You're building it for Christ. So if you're going to put your hand up to serve, do so. What's that English saying? The road, is, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Don't just make the good intentions. Follow them through with action. If you are going to be intentional about, I don't know, worshipping, then actually do it. Don't find excuses. Okay, now I, I, I am serving, but find excuses why you can't do it. Yeah, does that make, does that make sense? Let's be, let, be intentional, follow with action, because we are doing it for Christ. So when we are serving, serve with excellence, because we're doing it for God, not for ourselves or for anyone else. Yeah, just um, to say, make good decisions. You know, where your thoughts are is where your life will be. And there's so much about controlling what's going on in our minds. I and mean, you can get really fed up with load shedding. Or you can change your mind about it. And um, that's a good opportunity for you to spend time in prayer. You know, I read a quote by John Piper about uh, what, the wonderful thing about Facebook. It will be one day the thing that shows us that we actually didn't have time. The amount of time that we spend on Facebook. And so they, you do have time. You just gotta make a good decision about what you do with it. So the other thing I just wanted to add to what everyone was saying is, is that, um, find it here now, um, it's basically, you know, we're all born with talents, but God doesn't need our talents, he needs our characters and our willingness. Uh, God can um, transform us into anything he needs us to be if we are willing. Um, it's not about um, how talented we are at all. So we just need to remember that as well because we often feel that we're not talented enough to do something. Um, so, and believe you me, I did not feel um, equipped to uh, stand up and uh, or to put my hand up for this uh, upliftment and the Zulu uh, um, ministry, but God is helping me each day and He places the people that I need in my path because I can't do it alone. And it, to me, it's just this big mountain with this massive need. So, another thing about shared leadership is we need prayer, lots of it. And, um, we, and we are told that we need to pray for one another. We need to intercede for one another. So I really do need everybody to intercede for the uh, Zulu Church. And, um, you know, uh, God brought daily in school. And unfortunately, well, fortunately for school, his prayers were answered. And he um, had, um, has obtained a wonderful job to support his family and to be the head of his family. Um, but... In saying that, God has now sent us Peter and Faith. So if you could stand up, please, Peter and Faith, right where you are there, so I can introduce you. Okay, so this is Peter and Faith. And um, God has really sent them. They are um, a, a, true, a true gift to us in, in the Zoom ministry. They um, are on fire for God. I'm not sure who's more so, Mark or um, <laughs> Peter at this stage. Well, thank you, you can sit. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so um, Peter WhatsApps me most days and keeps me on my toes. So um, we are going to have a meeting with Simon who um, has um, some wonderful contacts for us, for the upliftment. 
But when we're doing upliftment, we are not going to just be worrying about um, equipping people to live in this world. It's also going to be about equipping people to live spiritually um, and bring God's word to them. So it's going to be twofold. And there's, um, there's a group of ladies that have already, and men, that have already put their hands up. And uh, we've got Julie, Judy um, Dipinar, who's going to be um, uh, uh, teaching um, first aid. So if anybody would like to join Judy um, with that, please contact her. Uh, I have Jen Van Royen, who's going to be helping uh, in all the little businesses that we're finding out there with financing. So budgets, how to price their products, um, and, and so forth. Uh, Lindy Kunlak has been already out there and his lady that he's been working with has already planted cabbages and she's reaped them and there's a market. Uh, Lauren McGuire has, is going to be doing uh, upliftment and art and showing people, uh, the children where they can, that they can find beauty all around them in the school in Midlopo. So anyone interested in doing that, contact Lauren. Uh, Cameron is going to be doing the livestock, uh, working with livestock farmers, and um, I'm going to be um, overseeing everything and working very closely with Peter, but I also have a passion on trying to um, collect waste in our area, not particularly us, but I'm talking about uh, uh, in the Nova, I'm going to put up stations where people can collect waste and put it in there and in turn they will get a voucher where they can collect clothing, blankets, anything along those lines. So if any of you have anything in your home that you don't have a need for anymore, please pass it along to us because it will be definitely needed by someone else and hope we're looking down the line to getting involved where they can maybe get a, a food parcel or something like that. But baby steps, that's what Debbie taught me, baby steps. Um, so now over to you. Hi guys, um, I'm going to talk about the, the Zulu farm business, Zulu church farm business. So it's not only farm, it's also for business. So if you've got a business in the area, you run a farm business, a, 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 a visit from Peter, come and talk to your staff, um, contact us, please don't go to Peter directly because we need to um, get, a, get a roster going, um, I think there'll be a few, quite a few people who want to do it. So the, the farm visits and the business visits will be at a, at a set time for your farm or your business and uh, Peter will arrive, he'll minister to your staff and if, if any of your staff members have a problem and want to talk to Peter afterwards, they can. Peter will help them. If Peter um, sees that the problem is too big, then he'll bring it up to leadership and we'll go from there. So please guys, um, there's not a lot of farmers here today, but if, if your friends are out there and they are wanting to, please encourage them to, to support us on these farm visits. Yeah, it's, it's very, very long with it. I know it's been good here and our staff really enjoyed it. Um, obviously with that, there's, there's, uh, will be a contribution to the church because there's fuel and there's maintenance of vehicles and so forth. So yeah, please think about that guys. Yeah, it's very, very worth, worthwhile. The next thing I want to talk about is the men. Guys, us men, we need to stand up. Yeah. We're the heads of our homes, we're the spiritual leaders in our, in our homes. We need to stand up, get more involved in the church, get more involved in the community. When you're at the pub or a sports event, don't backslide. Keep up your faith, keep up your principles. The other thing is, us men, I know it's me, uh, including, I bottle up all my feelings, all my worries, all my stresses. And we were just joking today, I see here I'm leaning against the cross. And <laughs> okay, okay, okay. we said, yeah, uh, what was that? What was that? All, all our problems at the cross. And please, guys. Speaking of our youth. And my uh, wife said, they're leaving us at the cross. <laughs> But yeah, if you have problems, pray, guys. It helps, it really does. And if 
if you want to speak to one of us, any of us here, we are always available. Please, I encourage all of you. Sorry, can I just add in, um, there will be uh, various main groups, um, so I just encourage you to, to, to connect with those. As Brett was saying, you know, sometimes we, we, we keep things bottled up because you don't share as a man. But we have found that with the men's group that we've had running, um, it's been an opportunity where men can share um, uh, things that you would normally share. And it's been very, very useful because it, what, what is said stays there. It's, 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 it's a safe place. Um, and we're going to be kicking off in, in February. Um, Jock is very kindly going to uh, present us with his trip on, uh, in Israel. Um, and then after that, there'll be some sort of theme or, or series that we'll be doing every Tuesday at Hopos Hall. Um, so I encourage them to connect there at the church. And there will be other events as well that you'll, you'll hear from as we carry on. Thank you. And also, just for the ladies, I encourage you to pray for your husbands. Especially during this time, it's not easy, and I know everyone keeps harping on and on and on about it, but um, it's, it isn't easy. And also to, to try and pray as couples, it will give you a, a new perspective on things, and you'll feel that you can... No, <laughs> well, I don't have to explain, you all know me very well. <laughs> I get emotional, um, especially when things are on my heart. Um, I really think that if we pray for each other as together as couples and as um, a husband and wife, this church will come out stronger. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, guys, God is building His church, and and we are the church. You are the church, and you're not God's plan A. You're God's only plan. That's the plan He's put in place to save the world, and it's the only plan, and it's going to happen. So uh, the only choices you know, are: are you on board with it, or are you not? And um, I honestly think. We talk about shared leadership, but um, the leadership goes right the way throughout the whole body. Um, you know, everyone has a role to play, and uh, God's in the process of fixing what went wrong in the Garden of Eden, and we are part of that process, and that's an amazing privilege, and it's something we shouldn't take lightly. It's serious business, and so um, God is building His church, um, and He's also building a first physical building there, yeah, that's that's the plan, that's what's in process. You've probably been wondering um, what's been happening on that front, because it's been fairly quiet for a while. Um, we've we've um, encountered one or two speed bumps on the way. I'm not too bothered about it because I know it's God's timing. He's not, it's not all about preparing a building, it's about preparing us to be ready to take on the responsibility that comes with the larger church and to prepare you guys um, for the roles that you're going to step into in this process. So we, we um, in a sense, we're waiting on God, but in another sense, we're waiting on each other because um, God is just uh, equipping everyone and getting them in position because he's not going to do a false start here. Once he starts moving, it's going to happen. And uh, so just, I think that's something to reflect on in your prayer is where do you fit into the structure? We've been in a comfortable place for a long time here. And I think for some of us it might get a little uncomfortable when things change. But you have to move forward because that's the only direction we can go. Um, so we've had a little bit of a, you know, initial plans. You've seen the models and the, and the plans up in the coffee shop for, for a while now. Um, the first hiccup we had was that there's been a road servitude that was registered a while back. Um, which basically means that our plans were turned down because uh, the building line um, comes just past the front of the church here. We can't build any closer than that, so we had to amend that. And um, now the latest speed bump is what's the name of that crowd? Martha. Yeah. 
It's the, the authority that's in charge of, me, of the uh, historical heritage. And now we have to get clearance from them for the plans. So we've got past the Department of um, the, the Roads and, and that side of things. Now we're going to deal with the heritage side, heritage side of it. I honestly don't feel that it's going to be a, a big um, long-term problem because we are respecting this historic building that we're sitting in here and we are, um, our heart is very much in the line of trying to preserve what um, the history that we've got here. So whatever um, happens there, I'm sure it's going to be something that's, that's for the good, but it might take a little while. Um, in the meantime, on the fundraising side, we've got around about half a million rand in our building fund at the moment, and then pages as well that take it up to about 850,000. So you've got a decent start on that. Um, we haven't done uh, a very detailed um, uh, budget on what it's going to cost, but I feel that not too long from now, once the, the admin um, hurdles have been dealt with, we'll be able to, stop, to make a start and we'll be able to see something happening. And, um, you know, I've, I've taken on a bit of responsibility in this field, but it's actually a small thing. You know, this, this building we're putting up is a small thing. The real um, construction work that's happening is, is in us. And having an extra building here that can seat to form you, a few more people that will get filled up for weddings and funerals, um, that's not the plan. The plan is that we are um, making a space available for God to use in whatever way he chooses. So our focus is that we want it to be a space that is flexible and adaptable because we don't know exactly, we know the end destination where God's taking us, but we don't know exactly the route that we're going to be following. And our, our goal is to be open to God every step of the way and ready to move whatever direction he chooses to point us. And, and we're all part of that, you know. Um, uh, I shouldn't be quoting Elon Musk, he's a bit of a weird guy, but but one of the things that he said um, is that in a company, people are like vectors. We have, we have a velocity and we have direction. And it doesn't help if you've got all the speed, but if you're pointing in different directions, you're not going anywhere. And so if, I think we need to just focus in our, in our prayer life and in, in our quiet times on trying to identify the direction that God is pointing us so that we're all working together uh, for his kingdom. Um, I don't know if there's anything. I haven't looked at me on my notes yet, guys. So, uh, everyone um, always gives me a hard time without, uh, I'm very long-winded. Uh, and I'm actually, uh, please don't, because I'm actually quite sensitive about it. <laughs> guys, you know, we're in an amazing position here, talking about leadership. We're in an amazing position. Like, you look around at us, um, I, I feel, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel there's no one here that's really up for the job. Yeah. Um, we're just a bunch of guys that are together trying to, trying to follow God. And that is the way God wants it to be. You know, you know what went wrong in the Garden of Eden is that um, Adam and Eve felt that they could be like God. And the way God has structured His church is that we need each other. So no one of us can ever get into that fall into that trap again of feeling that we we are we are like God. We are designed to need each other. And that's and that's what the, the model is, guys. We need each other. And um, uh, in this church, you know, I've been doing a bit of preaching. I can't imagine any other church where that would have that situation would have arisen. I would have maybe gone to church on Sundays and gone home and that would have been my my Christian life. But we're in a position here, we're a small church, and there's opportunity. You know, in some large churches, like if someone wants to sing in a worship team, they have to wait years for the opportunity. Here, you just have to give the a ring call and say, hey guys, I'm keen to, and, and we might have to let you down if your voice is really terrible. <laughs> but um, there are opportunities here that you don't get elsewhere. And as this church grows, we can grow into those opportunities. And then Mark's going to talk about One Life. We also connected in 
with a bigger um, organization. So we've got resources available that we shouldn't have available to us in such a small church. It's an amazing time to be here. You know, this church has been, been here nearly 150 years. And that's the original, um, uh, that's what Dave mentioned. When we started our building project, it would be nice to have um, made a dent in that building construction by the 150th anniversary of this church. And in that time, there have been hundreds and hundreds of people that have all contributed and got us to where we are now. And it would be a, a really sad thing if we used to drop the baton. Yeah. We need to continue the race and pass it on for the next generation. And it's about the young people. It's about the future. And that's something that we focused on as a leadership for a while. And it's a bit disheartening because there are not too many young people up here. But you know what? Um, Jesus' total ministry was about three years long. And I kind of think that I might have three years left in me. And I think most of us might have at least three years left. Um, maybe some of you are not going to make three years, but um, for most of us, we can give a good three years. But Jesus, Jesus gave us this, this model, and his model was 30-something years of preparation. And we've been doing that preparation. And I feel in my, in my spirit that the time has come for us to, to move on to the ministry of God and to go out and make disciples of the nations. And I better stop there. <laughs> I just think that that's an awesome, uh, exciting project that we've got ahead. And I just want to encourage you to, to get involved with that. Um, and, and that can be through prayer and also through finance. Because there's nothing that's more exciting than to invest into the future of the children and the grandchildren. It's, it's the longevity of God's kingdom. What a privilege. Um, on that, talking about the children's ministry, I just want to first say thank you very much to the group of moms that help. Um, it's such an important part of the church. It's such an important ministry. As Dad was saying, the children are the future. And it's also so important to reach children when they're young so that they can move in the right direction, they've got a good foundation for their futures because they're going to have to deal with a huge amount of changes. Um, so I think it's so vital. So please bring your children to church. Um, and in, in terms of the actual uh, ministry, we think the most important thing, Jesus loved children. And I think as teachers um, in the Sunday school, we need to show the children that we love them no matter what. We need to, need to be a safe place that they can share uh, any of their burdens and problems, we can pray with them, and we need to grow that. And I'd love to see Kids Church growing and expanding. We've had a lot of little children recently, which is wonderful to see, but because we're not big enough, we can't split it up into two groups who are wanting to do that. Um, so we do get one life um, every, we're very, very fortunate because we get programs that we can use, we get the, the program to find, we get materials. So we've got lovely programs, but we often have to adjust them for the little children. Um, one half have got programs for little children, but we, we get in, we're aiming it at sort of 10 year olds, and then if I've only got a couple of three or four or five year olds, then I change it and adjust it. And all of the ladies that do it are able to do that. They can adjust it for, for the younger children. Um, so please encourage your children to come, your friends' children, and, and let kids church start growing. It used to be a very vibrant children's church, and we'd like to get it back to that. Thanks very much to all those who help. And please, if anyone wants to help, please, you don't have to be a qualified teacher, just willingly, just enjoy children and, and we'll show you what to do. And everything's done for you, you don't have to do a lot of planning, which helps a lot. Thank you. I was just about there, talking about the children's church. Uh, men again, it's proven that if men come to church, the family comes to church. Absolutely. So please, men, come to church regularly. You know, um, speaking about one life, uh, before I go there, I just want to say thank you to every single person that serves in this church, whether it be T's, um, the tech team, the worship, everything, everything that everybody has put their hand to and is doing, we just want to thank you. Because none of it would work if nobody put their hands up. This would just be a dull, boring environment that nothing happens. But because everyone is willing and stands up and says, I'm going to do this. I mean, we have some fantastic teas, ladies. I mean, wow, the eats there. It's like, 
I really got to start gym again. But um, yeah, just going back to one life. Um, David, I just want to say thank you for hearing God's voice in the shower. You know, to walk alongside one life. You know, um, and and that's what happened. So what's happened from there till now? I look back on this past year, and you know, with with having started walking alongside one life. Um, my wife and I, we decided to take our girls to the evening service um, and because it's a young vibe and the kids just love the atmosphere and all that thing. And it's kind of just renewed something in us, uh, the bigness of God and what He's actually doing in the world. You know, we, we're quite small and I love the smallness, the togetherness here, but there's so much more with what God wants to do in each and every one of us. You know, there's a, a huge community of people here who know about God, but they don't know Him personally. And what God has done in our hearts and what He's drawing us, uh, you know, just uh, connecting with one life and then having the men's groups and the, there's ladies' groups, there's conferences. Um, I spoke about our kids going to the one conference in July and December. And then our niece getting, giving her life to Jesus. I mean, that just blew me away because we've been praying for her. She lived with us for three years and did not want to know anything about Christianity and all that. But seeds were being sown all over you know, the time that she was with us. And then came December last year, she went to one conference, blown away, and just gave her life to the Lord. And, and she's going with us to church tonight. So we're going to one life tonight again. So we've been doubly blessed. So, so I just want to encourage you, if, if anyone misses the, the daytime service here, there is that opportunity for you to go to one life in the evening. It starts at 6 o'clock, it's about an hour, hour and a half, and there's just such a good vibe, and the, the youth, the kids, uh, it's great. Um, so I, I really encourage you to, to look into that. And uh, I'm just so excited for this year, guys. Um, God is just taking us to a whole new level. Um, you know, we've been doing great things over the past few years. I mean, COVID really put a spanner in the works. But uh, we've come out of that. Yes, there's still going to be challenges. Yes, there's still going to be some, some rocky road ahead. But God, in us, Christ, the hope of glory, that's who we, we rest in. And we know that He has got us. No matter what's going on around us, if we fix our eyes on Jesus, He is the author and perfecter of our faith. And He's going to bring us through this time. And when we look back a year from now, okay, we, we can be blown away by what God has done to each and every one of us. All we have to do is say, God, here's my heart. And say, yes, Lord, I want to serve you, I want to love you, and I want to live for you. Because that is the thing that we're going to take into eternity with us. So, I'm going to share that. Uh, yeah, I have to say, sometimes when they tell you, they sitting next to this excitement. <laughs> but um, with regards to one life, um, for me, one of the biggest things is that they have got so many more resources available at their fingertips than we could ever have hoped to be able to make available as just little old Eastern Church. We, I mean, just realistically, we wouldn't have the finances to be able to make available what they are now giving to us for nothing. You know what I mean? So uh, my encouragement is to, let's all start making use of the, the resources. If anybody wants to know what groups they offer or what what physical resources they have at their fingertips, please speak to Mark and I. We can all, and if we don't know, we'll find out. There is so much. I know this year they started a grief counseling group. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who have lost loved ones over COVID as well. And, and just daily things that a lot of people are going through. And they're realizing that. And they're now offering a group for people to be able to come together and share and find comfort. And for those of us who sometimes, and I speak to myself as well, who sometimes battle to hear God's voice when you're going through a really tough time, they're there for that. They, they've seen that there's a need for that and they've created a way for us to hear Him again. There's a lot that they have on offer. And I mean, I'll, I'll, one thing I suppose I could actually get a list and make that something that we could actually put up to everyone that you know what there is available. Um, another thing just for the youth as well, I mean, I know, you know, just with our girls, we are going to be intentional to take them to youth every Friday night at the South Side. So if anybody has kids, I think it's high school, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's high school kids from 13 to 18. 
you know, because that's just reality that that's the, the age group that our kids fit into. So that's the one that obviously we're going to be going to. And we're going to go out to make our kids to youth every Friday night. So if anybody knows kids that are that age group that really want to get involved and go and hang out with kids their own age in a Christian, godly environment, we say, for you to, I mean, I know a lot of our kids are not able to come and talk to us about a lot of things sometimes. Sometimes you don't want to speak to your mom and dad. It's, it's just too much. They can get involved with them. There's always qualified counselors there able to help the kids. And it's just one way for our kids to come together in a Christian environment as well, other than just sitting in church with us every Sunday. So if you, if you know kids that want to get involved with going to youth on Friday nights, please chat to Mark. And I know Dave and Jen have put their hands up as well, that if we don't have enough space in our car, we can always make a plan to get these kids involved in Christ. Yes, we, we want to take my grandson Elijah, so we, we are going to be definitely involved with uh, uh, going on Friday to to one night. So hopefully if we can get enough of a group, we can do like a, um, a shared trip with the parents and grandparents who want to support that. Just one other thing I want to say that One Life has with the resources, which I found incredible last year, and I know Kathy also used to listen to it, is that they do a daily devotional. And that is brilliant. And also, if you run a small group, they, um, they, they have material that you can take off the internet uh, to run your small groups with. Um, there's, there's all sorts of other things too, but it is brilliant. So we are very, very fortunate to be able to, uh, to plug in to all these resources. So can I just say one thing? So one other thing I want to just add to that. This year, may this year be uh, a year when we start really like some good connect groups. I know there are some out there, but let us be intentional, like Jen said earlier, with getting into a small group during the week if we can, because it becomes a safe space where we can talk about stuff, uh, we, we read some scripture, we learn more about Christ, and that's where we can develop as, as believers, you know? And I, I just, I go back to thinking about when Jesus walked on, on the earth, and uh, he went looking for people, uh, and, he's, and, and he found a fisherman, um, and, and he said, come follow me. Jesus is saying to each one of you this morning, and us, come follow me. You don't have to do anything, just come follow me. And he will show you what, what he wants to do. So let that be encouragement to you. So let us let us do these connect groups this year. Let us meet together as often as we can, uh, because it's going to be great. So can I just say something on the connect groups? Um, don't feel that you've got to join a connect group that's already established. You can start your own connect group in your area or with people that you feel comfortable with. Uh, and you can get resources from the One Life uh, web site. And you don't have to have one person leading that connect group. You can each take a turn. So the pressure is off. Because often we feel we can't do something again because the task is too daunting and am I going to be available every week to lead this or am I equipped? Everything is there for you and maybe start by saying you're each going to have a turn to, to lead the worship, uh, to lead the connect group. So one quick thing, um, Linda Busso has started, um, I don't know how often she does it, but she does have a little group, um, is Linda here? Oh, there we go. Would you like to say something quickly? Yeah, it was just basically with the little kids at Sunday school and then, you know, they were in that limbo and it was for me a safe space and Justin and I worked quite closely with the, the, the Vans gap year um, and they would often come and do the music and do the games and help with the message and also, just a safe space for all these little farm kids to get together. It always involved a fire pit and a fire and hamburgers. And and the first one, I think everyone arrived at five. And I said to the ladies, well, what time should I tell their parents to collect them? And I was thinking eight. And she's like, no, nine. They won't be ready to go home. And I was like, yo, how are we going to deal with all these? kids for so long but anyway nine o'clock came before we knew it and um, definitely little farm kids from Eston school and I will again put it out our last one fell flat because it was Christmas club draw so I planned a date and that and then had to
to give it up. But definitely at least hoping for twice a term, just to get them all together. And it'll be it'll be grade six, seven, and up. Okay, so just to end off, I was just thinking how this is where God has planted you and I. And one day we have to account for it before God. So this is where he's planted you, and so get involved. Don't be a uh, one of those guys who sits on the sidelines and tells the rest what to do. You should have done. <laughs> get involved, get your knees dirty, make mistakes. You're in a safe place. And spend some time with the Lord and, and ask him, how can I get involved, Lord? Why am I here in this district at this time for this season? We're in a, we're in a, a period of growth. You know, if you think of one life, you might think, oh, I think I'll do it in one life. And there you are um, with a whole lot of leaders who have grown, who have been through what we are going to be going through, mm -hmm. this period of incredible growth together with the Holy Spirit. And that's what we get to do. So, so, so grow where God has planted you. And that is just about making yourself available and, and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He wants to work inside all of us. There's not a select few. If each and every one of us. We just have to be available. Shall we pray? Father, it's such a wonderful thing that, that you put us together in community. And, and we get to look at the picture of, of you and you, Father God, and Holy Spirit, and how important relationship is to you, and that is our model. And Father, as we come together as your church, I just pray, Father, that you will speak to each and every person here today and those listening to this online, and that they will spend time with you and, and search their hearts and find a place where they can serve, where they, they can be part of building your church here in Eastern Middle and we thank you, Father, that we don't have to have all our act together because you, Holy Spirit, will equip us. You just need willing workers. And we, are, I mean, there's that wonderful song that goes uh, calling, calling out your name. And uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if, if we all said, here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Thank you, Father. And uh, just the last thing I want to say is that if you have any questions, please uh, just ask any, any of the guys on the leadership team. Any, any concerns or questions or suggestions, we're open to that. Thank you. Thank you.